The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the hosts and guests as individuals, and do not necessarily reflect those of advertisers or sponsors. This show is intended as entertainment and commentary only. The producers strive for verisimilitude, but nothing said on this podcast should be taken as fact by the listener or viewer without performing due diligence. The existence, the physical universe, is basically playful. There is no necessity for it whatsoever. It isn't going anywhere. That is to say, it doesn't have some destination that it ought to arrive at. This is Keep Your Hat On, a show by three nerdy nobodies and one nerdy kind of somebody about nothing in particular. Keep Your Hat On is brought to you by the Narrow Band Broadcast Network, NBBN. The focus is on you. By PodSquadPDX.com, Painless Podcasting, and by the kind support of KYHO fans everywhere through Patreon. Patreon, create on your own terms. Coming up on this week's show, death in many forms, slow and agonizing, abrupt and brutal. We raise like lemmings towards the infinite void of not being. That is all. Enjoy. I'm a perfectly accurate and indistinguishable clone of your beloved disembodied announcer, Mr. Broomage, just so you know. Now, let's get whatever the hell this is started. Here's Andrew, Robert, Dr. Mark, and Chris. And hello and welcome back all you hats. This is Keep Your Hat on the show where hell even we don't know where we're gonna go. I am Andrew Scott along with my good friends Ty Robert Anthony hey. and Christopher Vacano. Howdy. And also, and forever, the person with no fixed point on the globe currently, Dr. Mark Peterson. Until Wednesday. Hi, ho. Which is why he sounds the way he does. Which is why he sounds the way he does. We are laptop in it, baby. Laptop in it. He is definitely going full on gorilla for us here, but uh, he is here. And how's everybody doing? Ah, the crickets are back. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I I purposely left that just you know. I did. I did too. Story. I figured I'd leave room for the cricket. Guys left left some elbow room for our cricket population. Yeah, we wanted to share the space with the cricket. Well, yeah, well, you know, it's spring. The cricket's got to come back. Yeah, Let's spring okay. somewhere, but not here yet. So there yeah. you go. Well, and and Mark is Mark is double dipping in the bad sound department because he's got a crinkly bag worth of the world's best potato chips. Oh. There is no argument. Jays. Jay's, Jay's not Lay's, baby. people. <laughs> Jay's not Lay's. That's like a bumper sticker. That is. That should be. We should be marketing for them. Yeah, Joe, Yeah, Jay's not Lay's. Maybe they'll become a sponsor. Andy. I would be yeah. so stoked if they were a sponsor. I will, just, I will start with a brief uh, account of my week getting relocated into the urban center of you are, uh, Milwaukee. You are still relocating. Yeah, I know. It's it's really interesting. Well, it, this involved... This last couple of this last week or so worth of delay involved closets and reorganizing closets. So it, it's yeah. the the shelf liners and the drawer liners have all safely and successfully been yeah, installed. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, and you're still together. <laughs> drawer liners. She's not walking around with that grimace face, like, "Oh my God, this is the largest mistake in my life." He can't even get <laughs> drawers lined. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, the the thing you know, and this is this is I think is true in lots of relationships is. Um, you might you might for a moment begin to criticize your partner for things that you find lacking or you know off your usual wheelhouse but you always take a moment and you go well is that true or not and then you go no no they're absolutely right and so <laughs> it was it's like i'm having a lot of that here it's like but what if we it's like no no she she got this one right that's like working with a good zen, zen sensei where they just give you that two and a half degree different perspective on yourself. And then suddenly <laughs> everything's fucking changed. And you're like, Oh my God, I'm a failure. It's a human. I think relationships, you know, it's, it's really fun doing this again as a, as a, as a real adult. I'm actually sort of like, I don't want to, I don't want to prejudice anything, but I, I think I might be emotionally, uh, mature enough now for an actual adult relationship. <laughs> and <laughs> nice I think, timing. I, well, yeah, it could be yeah. timing. Um, and, and one of the things I'm finding is like, uh, we were talking the other night and she was sort of a pop being apologetic. It's like, you know, 
relationship? Is it suffering? We've had to pick out flooring. We've had to paint closets. You know, I'm worried about the baseboards. Is this impacting our relationship? And, you know, it occurred to me that that is our relationship. Everybody has these moments, you know, in the relationship. We have a terrifically romantic uh, uh, relationship. But you know what? Um, uh, uh, romance involves flooring. It ain't all flowers. Just right? saying. And so that's where we are. Um, I, I think that you learn after yeah. your first two rodeos. After, for, after a couple <laughs> rodeos. Yeah. You learn that the clowns know things you don't. How about that? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> who knew so other than other than that my head hurts and my feet stink and i don't love jesus i guess i will quote jimmy buffett out here but uh, jesus loves me so i'm gonna be okay and um, there you go. <laughs> um i guess that's the most i could say for well, an atheist you know but... he's he's just all right well he's all right with well, me <laughs> still the best praise song the lord and pass did. the potato chip pass the ammunition. exactly i like the deviation there ty nicely done no. Well, gosh, people, we've got something lined up for we heard this that. show. We were uh, threatened. Dr. Mark, Dr. Mark and I are effectively in the dark. Chris is at least in the dim. Uh, uh, I'm like 80% in the dark. Hashtag in the dim. So this is going to turn into the Thai show, kind of. And I sense a nervousness coming through the internets here right now. We encourage <laughs> oh, that's just you to, me. As, okay, as, well. as well as you should. Yeah, I think. well, we encourage you to stick with us. We're going to bounce to a quick break and we're going to be right back. This is the Narrow Band Broadcast Network. We're the four knuckleheads. We're going to yeah. turn it over to the chief knucklehead here in just a second on the other side of this break. Don't go anywhere. Bye-bye. Hey everybody, Michael, your stalwart announcer here, the voice of the Keep Your Hat On podcast. We really hope you're enjoying the shows we put out every month and the bonus goofiness we try and throw in. If you do, we'd really appreciate your support. While we'd love it if you could help us out with a monthly donation by heading over to patreon.com slash nbbn, please don't forget that you can also support us by telling your friends, relatives, the hot Amazon delivery guy, hell, your potted fern about the show, and do the like, click, and subscribe thing. That's free, and it helps us out more than you might suspect. We just want to keep putting something good out into this bananas world at this extra bananas time. And we want you along for the ride. No matter what, thanks so much for audio visualizing. Now, let's get back to the show. And welcome back to Keep Your Hat On. I'm Andrew Scott, along with my good friends, Dr. Mark Peterson and Christopher Vacano. And okay, Ty, here we go over to you. Ty, what do No, I think I'm going to pass this over to Chris. Chris, oh, that's right. what I do you that. got, buddy? Uh, wait a minute. Okay, so so now Ty and I are bickering over who's chief knucklehead. All right. <laughs> uh, how it is. No, I'm just stepping back from that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I recently just finished up binge watching um, Midnight Mass, which if you haven't seen it, it's a fantastic show. It's it's wonderful. And within that show, uh, there's a really fascinating conversation about what happens when you die. And that got me thinking. And I sort of started turning over in my head and thinking about this common trope of uh, this idea that our life flashes before our eyes, before we die. And I got to wondering, where the hell did that come from? You know, what, you know, is that really a thing or is it just something somebody made up or what? So, so I started digging into it and, you know, it's, it's, it actually is apparently a legitimate phenomena. Uh, it's been reported for over a century. It, it started... Uh, well, I shouldn't say it started. One of the earliest reportings 
of, of this phenomena was a geologist in Switzerland in 1892. His name was Albert Heim. And he fell from a precipice while mountain climbing. And in his account, he wrote that, uh, as if on a distant stage, my whole past life was playing itself out in numerous scenes. Okay, so that uh, that's kind of one of the earliest reported instances of this. Now, we, I'd like to flash forward, uh, you know, because this thing has sort of just been out there. It's talked about in films and books and, you know, what have you. Um, and it, it's, it seems that only recently have psychologists and neuroscientists uh, started to take this seriously and get curious about it. So about five years ago, uh, at uh, a, a team at Hadassah University in Jerusalem did a study where they interviewed seven people who claimed to have experienced this phenomena, and they constructed a questionnaire of 264 questions that, you know, they were able with those data points to draw some inferences that, yes, in point of fact, you know, these people experienced this and, and, you know, there were consistencies in, in the way they talked about it. Um, now it doesn't always seem to happen that way. Uh, there's another story that I came across of a, uh, young man in the UK who, uh, fell from a three story building and, Rather than flashing on his past, he flashed on what he perceived to be a future. Uh, his, his name, by the way, is Tony Kofi. Um, and in this future that he saw, he saw like kids he hadn't had yet. Um, he saw a, a, the, the most striking image was him playing a saxophone. Well, now you could argue that having seen those images prompted him to make later decisions because what he did was he took the money the compensation money and bought a saxophone and now he's a, a famous jazz player and the last the last point i want to touch on is about uh, just very recently actually like uh the article was from february um in vancouver a group of british columbia uh, not canada uh british columbia uh, not vancouver uh washington, washington. Correct. Yeah, thank you for the clarification. A team was... Because uh, nothing important happens in <laughs> Vancouver, Washington. Trust me, I lived there for right. six years. Hey, so right. uh, uh, Chris, I, I got to yeah. ask you, when did this start showing up in in literature? In in, in popular culture? Yeah. Um, I, I wasn't able to pinpoint when it actually started showing up. Uh, and and found its way sort of across into uh, literature. I would say, you know, best guess would be around, you know, maybe the 1920s. I wonder when the um, first time that we saw this depiction of some sort or saw this pointed to in film was. Uh, yeah, again, hard for me to pinpoint. Um, I I didn't... Let's just let's just agree that it is. Let's just agree that it has been a trope for a long time. At least the 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 vast majority of the yeah. At least the vast majority of the twentieth century. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you What do you guys think? You think it's 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 there? Well, here's something that I think we should all establish: Who here has actually died at least once, legitimately? Oh well, I think there's only one of us. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I've come awfully close, but okay. no, I have not actually died. I was clinically dead without a pulse for seven and a half minutes. Um, so what was your experience? I had an experience. I will not share that experience here. It is a very personal and private thing. I do not want to discuss it. However, what I will say is that I did not have that happen. However, I did have something happen, but it was oh. not what... And this phenomena is traditionally referred to in in academic study as life review is yeah, what a, they a, they they call it is life an, review an LRE a life review experience exactly yep. right right um right. and i i had an experience it i guess you could say it was slightly tangential 
to life review, but it was not life review. I did not see all the things that I did in my past and et cetera. And for our listeners, I had a diving accident when I was 15 years old. I broke my neck. I drowned. Um, I went into cardiac arrest and I was gone for a goodly amount of time. Um, but uh, also, I was 15. What life did I have to review? I mean, you know, the, that <laughs> one time point. I wet my diaper in public, you know, yeah. stuff like that. So, yeah. Uh, so, now, we're, does, we're, that... all, we're all coming at this, except for me, uh, kind of with a blank slate. I was wondering, Ty, I know that there were some times where uh, with your car accident that shit got pretty real. Oh, I've, pretty I've been, so I've been in thready situations a number of times, but. Okay. But uh, so I'm the only one that's got a death experience, but my death experience is not that. However, I want to say, I wanna, I wanna say one, I want to ask one other question before we move on. And that is how many of us have attended somebody's death? Oh, I have. Where somebody died in our present. Oh, I have. Okay. You have, I have Dr. Mark. Not yet. No, no. Okay. Chris. I'm trying to think. Uh, I I don't. Chris is busy talking with his mouth full, which I... just remind me to drive over and slap you when we're done. No, let's just call his mom. Well, you asked Ooh. me. Um, All right. I don't recall. I don't recall any. You you would you would recall. So yeah. okay. So Ty and I we have that experience where we have been with somebody as they transitioned. Um. Did you did you have any kind of experience of them reliving anything? while that was happening there was nothing there was nothing that would indicate to me at that that there was something going on yeah there like, was no verbal okay no verbalization or anything like that how about for you interestingly for me i have i've attended a number that was something that i was doing for a while was uh hospice visitation and 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 sitting you know, sitting the solemn with people as, you know, certain people in my shamanic traditions would say for the transition um, of those. And there were, I want to, it was half dozen. Okay. A half dozen people I've attended their death. Um, two of them did express when they were going into um, what's often referred to in palliative care as transitional delusions or transitional dementia. Um, when they were going into that state, two of those people did express verbally that they were in a different place in a different time talking to a person who wasn't me. And it was people in their past. They're like, uh, one of them was a little brother. Uh, and another one was like talking to mom. That was it. And that's, I cannot put myself in their this head. Is, this so is interesting. that's all were those, I can say about it. Did those um, appear to you to be memories i would say one was and one's one didn't have a color to it that i could uh, that i would be comfortable in in categorizing the other question i have for you andy is that experience that you had mm -hmm. vivid as it was when you woke up if i close my eyes i'm reliving the experience 100 percent, just as it happened okay, so it is etched absolutely absolutely positively etched in 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 your brain yep has never gone away from the moment it happened that's interesting okay so we've yeah. got that we've got that groundwork established yeah, yeah that's i just great. thought i thought that that was relevant and salient because you know Absolutely. again if we all are coming in with preconceptions of this then i think it kind of ruins whatever experiment this is that you're doing yeah yeah okay so carry on absolutely mark what do you think about this this trope trope Here's the, I always go for what's what's been reported, right? And this seems to be a fairly common re report going back forever. Um, I was thinking about, you know, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, who was famous for all of her work, work on stage grief and all the rest of this, mm -hmm. went and, you know, she used to, so she used to work, full disclosure, she used to work for my dad at the University <laughs> of Chicago. Yeah. Wow. Grease no, from Kubler-Ross. That's my life. Dude, that's, what? That's impressive. Well, that's okay. Remind him to tell you the time that he wound up having fucking dinner with Jane Goodall. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I'm still oh, yeah. sticking my tongue <laughs> out to you for that. I, it's been a weird life, dude. But in, uh, right? uh, um, uh, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, Professor Ross, um, uh, went bonkers for out of body experiences and and uh, after death or near death experiences, and so she, there's a whole she's put together a whole literature on this. Um, she's a pretty good scientist as a rule, 
And a lot of her colleagues have thought she's, you know, think now that she's just gone bonkers. Uh, but um, uh, I'm certainly inclined to, you know, agree with the idea that as death closes in, there's a whole series of experiences that, that attend that. Um, my, uh, my, former, my former wife actually um, is a death doula and um, uh, now is off in Minnesota someplace, probably taking over the hospice care for the, st- the state. And they're but, better off for it. I'll give, Peg, I'll give Peg all the credential in the world for the work that they're yeah, doing. Yeah, she's awesome at this stuff too. She, yeah. she was lit up. And so, you know, she reported this all the time and it, it's quite common. So Andy had this experience with people he sat with and, and Peg reported the same thing that, that um, uh, they see people. Uh, the other thing they do is they want to get up and walk around. And so their body's trying to act out what they're experiencing in their yeah. minds. Yes. And, and so, and there's one other great phrase I love, which is called gero transcendence. And Ooh. it seems that there's a physiological process that it, that's involved in, in uh, dying and in the, in the process of working up to dying where you do experience these in transcendental states. So on that, on that kind of level, uh, Ty, that seems quite reasonable to me that that must be. So happening. we are, well, let me ask Chris has a trope. How do you find this? Um, so based on my reading and research, uh, and, and actually prior to my reading and research, my, my position hasn't changed much, which is, I think this is something that I'm inclined to believe can happen. Uh, I don't know that it's something that necessarily happens for everybody. Um, well, I, I want to jump in on you, Chris, and, and point to a word that you used that I think important. And that is, you said, it's you, you believe that it's something that happened. Yeah. Not, not that I believe it does. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that distinction is important as we move forward uh, yeah, in the I, discussion. I, I agree. I agree. Um, I, and, and, you know, I, I think I, chose that word pretty carefully um but uh, really if anything or it chose you or it chose me um if anything i feel like sort of my view is reinforced by kind of the last thing i read which which basically theorizes now based on recent information based on recent observation that maybe what happens is as your brain starts to shut down, it, it doesn't all shut down at once. Oh, okay. All right. Ty's, stop right Ty's there. throwing up the, uh, the that's, teeth. That's where, that's where we're, uh, uh, that's where, we're, that's heading. where we're headed. And I'm okay. starting to smell Ty from over here. <laughs> I think I know where, I think I know where this is going. I, I can't yeah. see the, I can't see the breadcrumbs here at all yet. So that's, and, that's going to be an edit, yeah. but let's, so, let's, so I'll just, I'll just stop at, um, yeah, I, I think it's a phenomena that, that can happen, but doesn't necessarily always happen for everybody. Okay, so, Ty. So, what if I told you that you guys are all correct, except maybe Chris. Chris, it may happen a little Sorry, bit bud. more often than you <laughs> think. As a matter of fact, it might happen to all of us. And with that, I bring you, cue the music. The Dead Man's EEG. Ah, all right. So, uh, this just got published the 22nd of February in the Frontiers in uh, Aging Neuroscience. So, this is not some hack journal where this you is, pay to get something. No. This okay. happened in this 2000. This must be an article I tripped across. Go ahead. This, this happened in, in 2016, and it's taken a while. So, it's been peer-reviewed. It's been looked at. And of course, uh, we'll, we'll link to it in the show notes. So. Oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> if we by the link way, to anything in the show notes, it's you this. You guys have the study in chat right now, and it's been oh, okay. there since cool. almost the beginning of the show. I was hoping Well, that means nothing to me, of course, because I never pay attention to chat, but I'm pulling it up now. <laughs> so so uh, 2016, let me, let me back up a little bit. First of all, this is a landmark study. Right now, as it stands, this is the only time that this has happened to human brain being studied this close uh, or in this grade of detail, this close before, during, and after death. Okay. Um, uh, um, 
So this guy, uh, th this group was studying this this uh, eighty seven year old subject who had fallen down, had a, had had a serious fall, had some yeah. bleeding on bleeding on the brain. Yeah, I'm reading T S uh, T S H uh, traumatic subdural hematoma, so it's bleeding on the brain. Got this. Yeah, yeah, bleeding on the brain. Uh, um, they operated. They treated the injury, relieved some of that blood. He stabilized for two days and then appeared to develop seizures. And so this team put an EEG on him, which is that, uh, for those of you that don't know out there listening, is this kind of helmet of electrodes that all individually hook up into, into a computer. And they image the brain. Uh, um, so two days after he developed these seizures, the EEG confirms the seizures, and while they're continuing to study, the patient dies of a heart attack. Um, but the EEG keeps running. And the EEG actually collected 900 seconds, 15 minutes, of imaging. Um, and they decided to really kind of focus on the 36 or the 30 seconds prior to and after right. uh, the heart stop. It sounds okay. like everybody was standing around after this poor gentleman passed away and went, you know, we're already here and he's already wired up. Um, we might as well pay attention. The way that I saw it was, you know, 15 minutes later, somebody said, oh, shit, he's still connected to the EEG. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Is they forgot that they were so busy in trauma response that they were I don't were, think it's like, oh, my gosh, we left the toaster on. I mean, <laughs> Do you shut the lights off? Oh, the, you're oh, supposed to shut the lights. Oh, the EEG. Oh, God. E e the machine that, that goes the, ping. Or, 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 the, or the team in the room was was trying to revive him. And, and yeah, was Chris, you're being the you're being the sensible voice and, here. And, and the sure EEG right. guy was sitting in the other room, going, "Oh my God, this is great stuff." <laughs> that would work. That would work just fine, except that this uh, this patient had a DNR. Which is do oh, not okay. and what so, I'm saying right, is just, right. this gentleman. This gentleman just, in question was like 87 or something. Right. So you know, in, for context, yeah. yeah. This is the last time I tip you off before we can talk about interjecting this. By the way, later or not, weird things that that I found out while my ex was going through her program and 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 her master's degree and all this stuff was that there was there's no scientific data about people dying up until like 15 years ago. Well, yeah, and, honestly, you know, it's like because one of the little. things is like doctors hate this stuff because it means that they failed. Yep. Right. Because their whole job is to keep you alive at whatever cost. And so what happens is when people hit that threshold where they're going to go, everybody just withdraws. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Until about mm -hmm. 10 or 15 years ago. And while the boomers are now crashing in <laughs> into you know, death. Um, so now it's important. <laughs> that's right. Now it's important. <laughs> but. What's also happened is uh, we have the technology available to monitor people as they die. Yeah, and this didn't even this didn't even happen because they just pull everything off, and it's like they're actually studying this stuff now, and it's had a huge. Well, you guys working in hospice care, you know, this has had a huge impact on the quality of that oh, last yeah. like twenty four or forty eight hours. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um. Well, let's back up for a minute and let's talk about how the normal human brain kind of works so uh we all have this is them. funny coming from you uh, <laughs> sorry uh, that's you funny. that up you wise guy so you won't yeah. be an example as well so, uh, yeah. the, the normal living brain or the abby normal living brain yeah, the abby, living who? brain let's just say the living brain the living brain you know uh has this rhythmic electrical activity Yes. And we call these things waves and different types of them, of course, link to different states of being. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, gamma, the gamma uh, oscillation is for, tends to be, or is thought of for high cognitive uh, functions, things like concentration, dreaming, meditation, memory retrieval, uh, uh, Conscious perceptions. Yeah, um, recognition, things like that. Kind of uh, the things that would link to a memory flashback. And um, other studies have shown like that alpha 
waves. They oscillate between 8 to 12 uh, hertz, and they may play a role in filtering out distractions um, or distracting, distracting sensory info. Squirrel! Right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well played. And, that and part they of may, my brain I, is broken. <laughs> those alpha waves may actually help you uh, pay attention. So, you know, we've got some, some good studies there. So... Uh, the results here, 30 seconds and the 30 seconds before and after, I'm sorry, the 30 okay. seconds before and after, there was an increase of gamma waves. Okay. Uh, and those oscillations, of course, are like we just discussed, learning and memory activities kind of thing. Um, uh, the findings of the ENG uh, uh, were increased gamma oscillation as well as increased delta, theta, and alpha and beta, excuse right. me, uh, oscillations. And, and these activities, this, this activity pattern is documented and resembles the pattern of dreaming mm -hmm. or recalling memory. Um, and so, you know, one of the, one of the researchers said, uh, given that, given that cross coupling between alpha and gamma activity is involved in cognitive processes and memory recall in the healthy object in healthy subjects it is intriguing to speculate that such activity could support uh, a last recall of life that may take place in near death in a near death state um and goes on to say uh though generating oscillations involved in memory through generating generating oscillations involved in memory retrieval, the brain may be playing the last recall of important life events just before we die. So, so, so it's like a white, it's information a, it's, dump. It, it's a ram scrub is what it is. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> it's like, you have to, you have to drill through the disc for that, Andy. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> It's like so, so, you know, my last Tim breath. It's like, Tim, doctor, bring the drill. It's like, no, no. <laughs> Tympanometric kind of thing, you know? Or, yeah. So, okay. So even on, though this I, is so, a single result, right? And granted, yeah. we had a TBI. We had some swelling of the brain that needed to be alleviated. There was the development of, of seizures. Um, and this guy was on anti uh anti-convulsant medication okay um, and so those things could could possibly sure i mean we we have we have variables we have uncontrolled variables in this whole thing but here's the deal it's still the only time a human brain has been measured with See, this why is that fascinating yeah i was just gonna yeah. say that's fascinating to me why is this it's 2022 even when this happened which was was to what did they say 2016 yeah Okay, something somewhere is around there. Really, two thousand. Yeah. This is what I was. This is what I was talking about. Is like we have digital watches. I mean, but they've avoided, <laughs> and we still think they're a pretty neat idea. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> this, stuff, this stuff was simply avoided like the plague, and this is why. You know, there's a couple of things I've always wondered why uh, medicine didn't look like. You know, why didn't they bother to look at what we eat? Like that would be like the first place to start. Pshaw. I mean, because that filters not here to prevent. Right? Yeah, here here to, not here to cure. Yeah, here to treat. Yeah. So the other thing too that strikes me here is that without this data, here's the one, the one little, the one little point I remember that 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 they finally figured out was as one of the things that happens. This is the other end of the uh, of the nervous system, but as you die, you stop getting hungry, yep. and your whole system starts shutting down. And yeah. what inevitably happens in hospice is relatives show up and say, oh, dad, just have another bite. And it's essentially it's like the worst possible thing you can do for people whose entire system is getting ready to shut down. And we know yeah. that now, yeah. but we didn't know that 10 years ago. Yeah. And of course, we think that if you eat, you'll stay alive. We don't want you to waste away right. when what's happening is the body knows that it's in its last lap and 
feeding it is actually, and this is something where it's, it's very touchy for me and uh, obviously for people who do this professionally, and that is, are you prolonging the inevitable or are you prolonging a quality of life? <laughs> and if by forcing somebody to, you're going to give them that much more gas in their tank, aren't you just prolonging their suffering? Aren't you interrupting the natural course of things? You are well, and if their physical systems are shutting down, then they're not going to get anything mess. from that food anyway. Yeah. I mean, if they're not able to digest food. Well, let's go back to the point. Is, that, that, shut that switch off. Back to the point we're making. Uh, we didn't know that. Right. Yeah. Right. right. And it's like it's only been this last little while that they've they've been able to carefully study this. That gets to be the interesting sociological. It's, it's, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I thought that was interesting too. And I I, I also uh, so they haven't been able to find a previous study, a, a previous case where um, the brain has been studied in this detail, in this fashion. And so, what uh, coming speaking to your point, Mark, I I was I was like, how are they going to continue to do this? Oh. Terminal cancer, got it. You're getting close. Hey, want to wear a hat? <laughs> you know how well, do you how do you put that to somebody? Here's and... here's the thing. I would sign up for that shit. That's yeah, one I would thing too. that I, I would... know. That's one thing that I know about my demise. As much as I might fear it, and I'm not going to lie, no matter how long I've been practicing Buddhism or any of my other spiritual traditions, I got a big hanging mm, about not being here mm -hmm. um and so <laughs> i know that one thing that i do want to do with my death if possible is make it count and make it count yeah. for science and make it count for things that might dispel unhelpful myths or or give us a greater insight into either the living or the dying process yeah that's just it take my body I broke my neck when I was 15 years old. I'm donating my body to science because I want science to be able to study what my accident did to my body the rest mm -hmm. of my life so that people that have to go through the same thing I did have a better chance. Right. Why not? And I'm dead. I'm gone. Please I, use you know, this I'm, shell for something good. I am so 100% on board with you on that. And, and that's that's where I'm at too, you know, in terms of, wanting my death to have some uh, some sort of value grind me regard. up and put me in my and, garden so that i useful mulch i almost know? i almost see the idea of i, I mean I, maybe this is maybe we need to begin a discussion about expanding the idea of the living will and the dnr mm. to include a statement saying hey at the time of my at the time of my passing collect as much data as you possibly can somebody run a reason. tape yeah somebody yeah. record this shit yeah so we got we got all these caveats right and 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 this is i mean these researchers were looking for a similar uh a case or a similar study couldn't find it anywhere the only thing they could find was a lab and i kind of i kind of shivered and got the grammys about it and and had a tough time Hanging my morality here for a little bit. And this is interesting because if it squinked you out. Wait, well, what? and that was the only, the only similarity that they could find was in a study done with lab rats as they died. Oh, and I'm right. not, I'm, big, I'm with you. I'm, I'm not with a big you. fan of that. I have, I have a bunch of questions around. Yeah. I hate necessary evils. I, you know. I, I, lean on really I lean on evil, not necessary. That's just yeah. it. So yeah. All well, right. Anyways. Yeah, I mean, our, cur our, our curiosity does not equal necessity. That's true. Yeah. Anyways. So Ty, what'd you get out of this? But these, these, these caveats, what happens is, is the studies in the rats, uh, um, as they died and, uh, the study of this individual, um, um, you know, despite the caveats, the overall similarity and oscillation changes, uh, between the highly controlled experimental rodent study and the present work, being the, the paper, um, suggests that the brain may pass through a series of stereotyped activity patterns during death. Okay. Um, and that basically these, these patterns may be a biological uh, maybe our brains organizing and executing biological processes 
um, that may be conserved across species. Okay. So this may be something this gives, this gives at least opens the door for credence to that trope. Okay. People do see it. Now that later on in these articles that we'll post the, um, uh, the doctor starts to say, well, it's nice to know that when our loved one's eyes are closed, they're reliving uh, uh, possible happy moments. And so I started thinking about, I mean, it brings up a few good questions before we get to the to the recall part of it, right? I mean, this is representing recall. We don't know whether it's recall. That's where I found that, um, what you were saying about the guy who claimed that he saw the future and went out and bought a saxophone. Right. 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 Uh, right. Uh, um, I thought that Who was really interesting. That? Yeah. Uh, but it brings up questions like when does, I mean, now we have to really think, rethink when life does end and why? No, not. Yeah. Okay. Mark, will you tell us why life ends, please? Well, I mean, because you die. I, oh, <laughs> well, I'm going to bust you both in the chops and say, you can't prove that. We don't even we don't even have an actual working definition of death. Well, yes. we That's do. In fact, thinking. the working definition is brain death right now. But we thought that brain death happened when uh, blood and oxygen stopped. Go, when the heart stops, then the brain must be dying, right? No, when but the that's EEG, not true. Now no, we've it's got, when the EEG starts to flatline. Yeah, yeah. But that's a scientific definition of death. That's right. That's the practical working definition. We just that's, now have an extra 30 seconds. After that. After that. Okay, so what you're telling me, though, I'm, then I'm, I'm missing you here. Because the brain is like, still functioning. What you're saying is that after the brain waves go flat, the brain waves aren't going flat. Oh, no, 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 no. We didn't know that the brain wave, when, the, when exactly the brain waves are going oh, flat. Oh, yeah, we've never stopped to keep yeah, that EEG on. Yeah, okay, I'm with you now. Okay. Yeah. So it, it, it brings up that question. It also brings up, you know, some questioning around um, organ or organ does it? viability yeah. organ well, donation mm -hmm. when, well, you know, when, this is a real problem in fact because what what could happen then is you know the surgeons are going to when you die and you've donated organs they they hover right. over you yeah, waiting yeah, they want to harvest immediately at their watches yes. and right. so that does raise they want to really, keep the, they want to keep those organs as fresh as possible yeah that raises yeah, they've got those igloo coolers questions. nice and chilled out and ready to yeah. go with your absolutely yeah. So it brings that question. What are you saying then about, then, then, then straighten me out here, Ty. So what are you saying about this definition of death needs to be reexamined? Well, I mean, just what you're saying. When, when, when does life end? Does, it life, does life end when that line goes flat, right? Which is, what is that monitoring? That's heart, monitoring blood flow and it's monitoring the heart right is it oh, monitoring if, the brain yeah that heart death doesn't seem to be enough right there's the brain's right. going to keep going after that for at least a few minutes oh and i'll scare you all to kingdom come here with one of my all-time longest lived sorry about that joke um fears we know back during the reign of terror oh people who lost their heads to the guillotine mm -hmm. were blinked. able they their I'm just going to come out and say it. Oh, this is doc. This is well documented. When you lost your head to the, when you lost your head to the guillotine, you saw your face fall into the basket. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. well documented. There were doctors. There's reports from the time. The doctors were actually watching this happen. Oh yeah. Yeah. And uh, the, I remember one, um, the, uh, some French doctor, he would run up and he was, would poke people in the eye. Yeah. Wait, no, no. I said people. He would poke a <laughs> decapitated head. head in the eye <laughs> with his finger and see if he got a, a pupil reaction. And one time he poked a head in the eye and the eye fluttered and blinked at him. Wouldn't, okay. it, wouldn't it be funny if it just said, hey, quit poking me in the eye? <laughs> <laughs> the last things you Are said you going, were... Well, you know, there's also reports that the, that the, that the heads attempted to, were still trying to speak. We're trying to speak, well. but they couldn't because right. they had no air moving through their... Yeah, no their, lungs. Yeah, well, they well, had no lungs. Yeah. yeah. So, so Ty, what are you saying here? Is like, if you hooked them up to a vacuum cleaner, they'd have been able to <laughs> say something. Yeah, I find... I, 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 Ouch. I, again, I'm... I'm <laughs> I'm 
I'm Ow, with you again. that hurts. I'm with you again, Andy. I uh, I actually kind of find this uh, this whole topic and discussion area a little bit unsettling and unnerving. oh yeah i was just going to welcome everybody to the definitely the most morbid and grossest episode <laughs> that we've had so far so is it tie, though tie, i mean this 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 data tie, is really i tell you what it is tell interesting tie, uh, interesting is not a question let's throw to a quick break here and then we're yeah. going to come back and then we're going to beg you to bring us in for a landing on this so this okay. is the narrow band broadcast network that's Dr. Mark. He's the only doctor we got, but he's not that kind of doctor. And we could probably use. He plays one, one on TV. Stage. He plays one on. <laughs> he plays one on the internet. Do biomedical Chris, ethics. <laughs> totally different, but very relevant right now because we don't want people running around yeah. poking, you know, decapitated heads in the eye. That's Ty. I'm Andy. We'll be back. Don't go anywhere. Bye. Click. Click. Hat Nation. Want to support the show and help it grow or, well, keep the lights on? Head on over to kyhopodcast.com slash shop and buy some cool swag. Shirts, phone cases, hoodies, and yeah, hats. I mean, duh. All proceeds go right into Andy's pocket. Uh, I mean, help keep KYHO in your ears. That's kyhopodcast.com slash shop. Go get some cool stuff, rep the show, and as always, keep your hat on. Which is a lot easier when, you know, you have a hat, right? And we're back for the final, and oh, final oh, oh. has a different uh, weight to it. <laughs> no, uh, let's not lose episode. our heads. Uh, <laughs> 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 right. On Keep Your Hat On, I'm Andrew Scott, along with Dr. Mark C.E. <laughs> Peterson, Chris Vacano, oh, 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 oh. and uh, our favorite Paul Bear, uh, Robert, Ty, Anthony, and... Ty has set us up with an interesting discussion that none of us really knew anything about. Uh, and Ty, did you kind of keep this close to your vest because you didn't want us to come in with a bunch of preconceptions? Or I think that was it. That was it. And and you know this this kind of uh, for me it mattered because one we haven't seen this data before. And why does that data matter? Well, and and to, again to be clear, just really briefly, we're talking about that whole trope of your life flashing before your eyes as you die. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. But I mean, this data of the dead man's EEG is is really important because one, like we were just discussing, uh, this brings up questions of organ donation and when those organs might be harvested. You know. Uh, I so what do you mean, like there's a perfect time to pick your organs? Is I don't know. I think I don't know that there's a the ripest. As the... Well, you know, as we said, you know, the do the doctors that harvest tend to hover over those bodies uh, um, of the deceased. And 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 organ donation and organ harvesting has, in the last ten or so years, it's really taken on this pal of a business which i don't like i mean i understand the dr yeah. the dramatic need for it and everything but it really is kind of turning into an industry unto itself and a really dark one at that kind of even at its uh, even if the hands are above the board it's a dark one right well, i mean I, that's I'll kind of you, baked, was, that's kind of baked into it but it yeah. was definitely dark when i woke up in that bathtub full of ice uh, yeah exactly <laughs> 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 Kidding. The other no, one. The other one. That you, you've lived just fine without your testicles. So there's no. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. No. no. Yeah. I, you guys have just been teeing them up for me. That was uh, month, so. Andy. That I, was low hanging fruit. Oh, oh, oh man, I'm gonna have to come up with like four or five different rim shot sound effects. I don't want to keep on beating the same drum. So, <laughs> anyways, Ty. What were you gonna say, Chris? Oh, I was just gonna say, you know. Uh, I, th I think this matters, too, because it opens up some other, you know, just some other interesting questions and, and challenges kind of a reevaluation of of sort of the universe of uh, near-death experiences. Um, and, 
you know, the, the light at the end of the tunnel, the doorway, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, but I, you know, I also got to thinking, um, you know, the, the whole Egyptian myth of Anubis weighing the heart and, and the good and the bad. And, and that actually touches on, if, if I could re refer back to the study at Hadassah that I mentioned, at University of Hadassah. Where um, is University of Hadassah again? Is that Israeli? Yeah, it's in Jerusalem. Oh, okay, um, all right. And, and one of the things they found as, as the consistencies was, was in the people looking back, the memories were generally either very, uh, they were generally a combination of very positive and very negative memories. Mm -hmm. And that they felt profound sense of empathy and possibly even the experience of other people involved in those memories. No, so, whoa, 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 wait, wait a second. Who's the they? I'm, I, I got lost. Uh, there. The, 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 the seven people who had been, uh, who had participated in that study, answering the questions, filling, a, a, doing the questionnaires. Oh, oh okay. I, I, I was trying to establish whether or not it was the people attending the, that, or if it was the people experiencing the deaths. It was the people who had experienced. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That, that, okay. Uh, and for example, they would remember something awful they had done to somebody else, and they felt a profound sense of empathy for that person. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and it, it 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 does it does open up that, and let's stick a pin in that and come back to that in just a minute. But again, coming back to the next reason that it's important is it reposes the question of when does life end okay not when the body stops pumping blood or the heart stops working but when does life end well and that's something that we were talking about during break is that there's a there's a concept of clinical death which is a biomechanical process and then there's the big hanging question the metaphysical death and whether of, whether there's such a thing, right? I mean, right, you know, exactly. That's just it. Religious processes believe that there that there is life after death, right? And the real issue for us, of course, is whether and how one might establish that. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, people can people believe all sorts of things, right? Reincarnation, um, Valhalla, <laughs> if you're mm -hmm. lucky, and uh, Shaul, and yeah, Shaul, or you know, or gentle Jesus, meek and mild, but. Um, I don't know how we would establish that. The, I, the provocation I wanted to toss in on top of this, Robert, was, um, you know, when we start talking about questions about when does life end, not just, you know, mechanics, right, but the sort of the underlying religious beliefs and all the rest of that is what this really prompts is a question about when life begins, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's what's interesting to me about this is like, and, and I've tried this a million times and it doesn't work, um, is that. Uh, people who believe that life begins at conception, right, think it's perfectly okay to pull the plug on grandma after her brain activity stops. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's right. like people who believe that it's perfectly okay to pull the plug on grandma when her brain activity stops because brain activity is their minds, you know, the definition of when someone dies. Um, they won't allow abortions to continue up until the advent of brain activity in the fetus, right? Which is first, you know, through the first trimester typically. And so those are the kind of, that's that's where, you know, once you start to set these boundaries, it moves off the science and into the social questions and yeah. the religious ones and all the rest of it. This whole discussion is nothing but a minefield of confirmation biases. Yeah. This, uh, 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 these people, well, yeah. And I and and this speaks to, I, I think this mirrors what, what Mark was just saying. These people that are, um, pro-life are only pro-life up till the point where the child's born and then you all are on your own yeah 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 and then when it comes down to it there's that that's the other weird irony here right yeah uh we'll we'll disconnect you whenever we feel like and it. look to be fair we're not taking a stance pro or con. We all have our own views of it. We're not here to proselytize about any particular side of that pitched battle. Right. So, Ty, go ahead. <laughs> uh, uh, but, you know, the real thing that I kind of wanted to get to was these doctors kind of took this uh, hopeful view. Oh, that... you mean the doctors from the study? 
Yes, the doctors okay. from the study. I'm sorry. I didn't clarify. It's okay. It's uh, the broadcaster this, and me trying to keep things clear for the listeners. This whole, this, this, these folks that, that did the study kind of kept this f- hopeful view towards the end of two of these articles that I read, uh, which was, oh, when your loved one's eyes are closed for the last time and they're dying, you can no rest that there there's brain activity that supports the fact that they are probably reliving their happiest moments. But the thing that came up for me is that true and does our perspective and and the way that we carry ourselves through our lives have any kind of effect on what we see in that last 60 seconds. If we see, if we actually are doing a memory dump, I mean, it's, Nobody's there to tell us, oh, yeah, I'm doing a memory dump now. I'm, uh, but it speaks to what you were saying earlier, Andy, about your experiences with those that were dying. So what do you think, guys? It would be hard to, it would be hard to, uh, to find out the answer to this question since people who successfully die uh, don't come back to tell us. I, that's, yeah, that, they, can't, that's they, they can't communicate it back to us. And even- but do you see it as a karmic thing? But that's a well, different question. It, that, yeah, well, I was just going to say that just muddied up all the water because now you're bringing in a perspective on it that's based in a spiritual tradition or a spiritual belief, or at least uh, uh, if, if you want to take this, the word spirit out of it so the woo-woo goes away, uh, yeah. with, with a view, with a preconceived view of what happens. And so if the grand answer is that, None of us fucking know. Except Christopher Walken. No, of course none of us know. Of course none of us know. But I'm I've been again dead a few and weeks ago. Know. A few weeks ago I talked about how everything that we do in our lives is training. Mm-hmm. Training for something. Training for something. Well, what if this is the last test? And how well, you've trained will you know, because I mean, if you really want to blow it into out of proportions, there's the Bardos and there's yep. the trials, and then there's yep. the weighing of the heart and all that stuff. Wow, but you maybe can, you, those you just things com- it's complicated like four different spiritual traditions. What if one? all those awesome. things are pointing to this set of data? This is where the heart gets weighed. Hmm. This is where the Bardos lie. You know, uh, um, because we know that a dream of a few seconds in, 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 in our, you know, by the clock can actually Uh, stretch out to, to what, uh, what we feel like is hours or a day or whatever. Well, and what if that is this? Yeah. And I mean, here, Ty, are we coming in for a landing on this? Because I don't want to interrupt you with, I don't want to. Okay. All right. So. This has been Ty's questioning mind. I think that's what we're going to wind up calling this whole episode here. Um, and and I'm going to try to refer to this generally as we kind of wrap up the show. I have I have lived a very weird life. I have a lot of weird expertise in a lot of weird areas, and. I'm going to put a preface to what I'm saying here. Don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> Mark, Mark, go ahead. What, what does he mean by don't do drugs? You don't need them. Well, <laughs> so it here, turns out you don't really need them. Well, here's where I'm going with this. All right. Are you going back to your accident? No, but oh. maybe All right. a little All bit. Right. All so. Right. I have lived a very interesting life with and without drugs. To be upfront and honest, uh, I've been addicted to two very nasty things in my life. I've been sober from them for a long time. However, having said that, uh, I'm a drug advocate. I believe in drugs. I believe in being able to experience different states of consciousness. Now, I believe in that also by way of things like uh, meditation and cyclical breathing and, you know, things that come along uh, with the whole uh, yogic practice and shamanic practice. Those things, are we, we've actually studied them with science, and we know that those things work too. EEGs. Um, exactly so. 
there are a number of different compounds that you can ingest in one way or another. And we've studied these compounds for a long time. One of the things that some of these compounds do, and I've had this experience, this very experience, is what you were just saying, Ty, the time dilation that happens in certain psychological states that have been brought on by use of drugs is dramatic. And there is a particular kind of drug, there is a particular compound called DMT, dimethyltryptamine. And everybody who's listening to us that has ever listened to Joe Rogan is going, oh, this stuff. Um, I have spent years at a time in a different state that the, the, the clock in this world, in this timeline, measured in seconds. So, and I'm, I'm not for or against anything that we've discussed. What I'm throwing in as a monkey wrench is that time dilation is a real thing because I've personally experienced it. So I'm not just woodshedding here. I'm saying this is something I've experienced. So whether or not you believe that a life flashes before your eyes when you die, what I can say is that there are things that happen in the brain. And by the way, the thing about dimethyltryptamine is we're starting to understand that the human brain actually has it endogenously. The human brain generates DMT. And at such a, such a dramatic moment as death, there are scientists, not just knuckleheads, there are scientists who are starting to wonder whether or not when the brain really does start to go offline, the last thing that happens is a massive dump from your hypothalamus of all the DMT and all the serotonin in your brain at one time. And at that point, I can conceive that time dilation sets in and that the consciousness does experience a full replaying of vast amounts of time that the human being has experienced as it transitions into whatever is next. So I'm not saying it does. I'm saying that from my own personal experience, I can conceive psychologically and medically that it could potentially happen that what could potentially happen that you could relive your life flashing oh, before oh, your yeah. eyes yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in moments we now have at least, or at least big chunks of it hey did i tell you that we now have an eeg study that suggests that well and you know ty when you were when you were talking a moment ago you took my thinking to a really, really interesting place. And it, it, this is this is kind of my last thought on the matter. But it's one I'm going to have to go and chew on. And that is maybe that final memory dump, whatever it is, uh, is, is, is sort of our final judgment. And the judge of the value of our life is ourselves. Dramatic crickets. Was that a, was that a mic drop? <laughs> I, I, was, I think it was a something drop. Ty, you got anything to say on the way out about You know, uh, uh, <sighs> right. yeah. thanks. Good so night, long, good waitress. Please, uh, so long, and thanks for all the fish. So long, yeah, yeah. That I think that that all. Of, thanks for summing that up for me, guys. <laughs> well, folks, it's been a fascinating discussion about the end of days, and uh, we really hope that you don't experience yours anytime soon. But this has been the four knuckleheads of the apocalypse, and this has been days and endless nights. There we go, and we're get, we're going out with a song. I That's, hated Freddie uh, Fender so much, by the way. Thank you, Ty. 
just the, the hate dress, is such a strong the word. clothing the the whole anyways this has been keep your hat on i've been andrew scott that has been dr mark peterson that has been christopher vacano and yeah that's been ty and then this has been the I, show we oh, tied I one on and now we're going this. to have to live with that andy that's what i say <laughs> and i tell you what folks as always we tell you keep your hat on because you know when your head rolls into that basket it's gonna be a nice cushion to land on and hopefully nobody sticks you in the eye thanks a lot everybody take care wear your masks get your shots take care of your fellow man and we'll see you next time bye bye it's the big bye bye well there's a chunk of time you can't get back from portland oregon this has been keep your hat on a big little show about a whole lot of nothing in particular Keep Your Hat On is a narrow band broadcast network production in association with PodSquadPDX.com. Andrew Scott, executive producer. Robert Anthony and Chris Vacano, associate producers. Our theme music was written and produced by Andrew Scott, along with help from Ron Kajawa. Website design and maintenance by Vacano Creative, Chris Vacano Webmaster. Available at VacanoCreative.com. Audio and video production by Andrew Scott, available at andrewscottmedia.com. Got ideas or comments for the show? Email us at talkback at kyhopodcast.com. And don't forget to like, click, and subscribe. On behalf of the boys, I'm your announcer, Michael Brumage. Thanks for listening. Uh, I guess. Out. Well, that was extremely much more flatter than I envisioned it. <laughs> I did not envision it being this flat and turning into some kind of gruesome thing, but there we have it. Yeah, there we have. It. I think that's the way to sum it up. Yeah, uh, you, uh, you bring I, death to the party. You shouldn't be surprised when everybody starts focusing on it. NBBN, the Narrowband Broadcast Network. The focus is on you.